Let's do a little experiment. I want to find out how the $40 eBay special carburetor synchronizer vacuum gauges stack up against the $140 Morgan Carbtune Pro. I've always been using these and it's always been in the back of my head. Could I get my bikes running a lot better if I had more accurate gauges? So I finally bit the bullet and bought this Morgan Carbtune Pro, which I have not used yet. The Morgan Carbtune Pro, it's a nifty little device. Instead of using fluid inside of it or a vacuum dial gauge like this, what it actually has is a steel rod inside of each of these. So when you apply vacuum to one of the lines, and I've cut in and put the, um, not diffusers, the, uh, the restrictors in there, when I apply some vacuum, you'll see that steel rod will lift up. And that's pretty sweet. So one of the things that Morgan claims, and I've been going through their manual, is that the gauges do not need to be zeroed or calibrated. All parts have been matched at assembly. Damping of the gauges and friction of the rods may be slightly different in each column. This does not affect the final readings, only the amount of time to, only the amount of time to get there. So no calibration required on that thing. The only thing it does say is that if somehow the rods got dirty, you can disassemble the thing and clean them, put them back in, make sure they go in the same one because they're calibrated at factory. My gauges, these can be calibrated and I've been playing a bit with them. I believe my gauges have been off a bit. So that gives me some hope that I can get my bikes running better. Let me show you how I'm going about calibrating these. So the way I'm testing these gauges is to run every one of the lines to a four-way splitter. And this is actually a piece that I forgot I even had. I had it for my aquariums, I never used it. I realized I could break the vacuum pole evenly four ways off of a mighty vac, which is gonna pull a consistent vacuum across all four of these. So when I give it some vacuum, all of the gauges should move and I want them all to read the same. Now with gauges, we're gonna be looking at multiple different spots. It's likely we're not even going to be able to get the gauges to calibrate correctly in every single location. So I'm gonna look at it at one pole, two pole, three pole, four pole. How do they look? I'm gonna bring you in a little bit closer. There is the slightest little bleed somewhere in here. So I slowly, slowly, slowly lose pressure, but it's worth noting in that there's a slight leak somewhere in here. So I'm gonna put one pole on it right now. I have the lenses off. You can take the lenses off of these things, and every one of these has a little calibration screw. That's this thing here. There, 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 and there. And by turning that, you can adjust where the needle is sitting. If you just try to calibrate by hitting the zero mark here, it's gonna be way off, because depending on which way it comes from, it ends up in a different spot all the time. Originally, I tried to calibrate by putting it at the zero, and now I realize that was very not smart. So I'm gonna put a pull on it. Another thing I should note is that this gives you a reading, but these are gonna be actively moving when you have it on an engine. So if you tap it, those needles end up moving a little bit. So I tap it before I end up taking my reading. These all look pretty good when you're looking at them. If you just look from center right here, the outside ones definitely look off. You have to move your head there, and then there, there, and there. The one that I think is slightly out is number four right now. I think number four is reading slightly high. So we're all pretty close to five right there. I'm gonna give it a second pull. This one is just under nine. That one's further away from nine, further away from nine, further away from nine. These three look good to me. This one looks a little high. I'm gonna give it another pull. I just wanna see how these behave during the whole range of vacuum pull on them. And these three look pretty consistent. This one's just slightly high. I think I'm gonna try calibrating it at pull number two. Because I think that's where the readings are actually going to be. So I'm gonna take my screwdriver here and I just want to bring it slightly. Actually, I wanna tap it first, what am I doing? I wanna bring it slightly right there. Let's try that. And I went too far. So this is the thing with cheap gauges. It's possible I'll never get them exactly perfect. And even if I do, each one of these gauges being 10 bucks, 
maybe they're not that accurate to begin with. But from what I'm seeing, I'm pretty close on three pulls, four, three, two, and one. I feel comfortable anywhere from zero to about 14 on there. So we're hooked up to the auxiliary tank and I think this is about as good of an angle as I can give you. I had just taken this bike out on my first ride of the year and it is running about as well as it ever has. If anything, I believe, according to the gauges, again, these gauges may not be right and the bike feels great, this gauge, this one might be slightly off of three. That's what I'm going to look at. there that's a reasonably good synchronization that's about as good as i can do with these vacuum gauges 40 dollar ebay special now let's do the carb tune i have never done this before assuming that they're working correctly and they're somewhat hillbilly calibrated like I did. That being said, the, the Morgan carb tune is much easier to use. It's, it's much easier to read and you don't have to fidget with the little restrictors and everything like that. But I think a lot of the recommendations for that carb tune and the reason that so many people say, oh, those cheap, those vacuum gauges that you get, that's absolutely garbage, you might as well not even try it. I think a lot of that is some elitist, supremist bullshit for people trying to justify their purchase of this carb tune. That being said, I'm going to keep using this carb tune going forward. You watch Spar, thanks for watching.